the government of the People's Republic of China and the government of the United States have had great differences. We will have differences in the future. But what we must do is to find a way to see that we can have differences without being enemies in war. We're continuing a relationship, and I think that's a very important point. Starting with President Nixon's famous visit to China in the 1970s. General Haig, Dr. Kissinger, President Nixon, show in line, Mao Zedong. The risks they took 40 years ago at the height of the Vietnam War to realize that our two nations had mutual interests. The U.S.-China relationship is one of the most important relationships in today's geopolitical structure. Our nations are going to be joined with strategic engagement at all levels. It's important that our two nations have a relationship where we can communicate freely and openly about issues that concern both countries. We need China as much as they need us. It was an athletic event, ping-pong diplomacy between our two countries started the public demonstration that we could compete together, but in a peaceful manner through athletics. Cultural events have been milestones in building this relationship. And now, of course, we have our two bands. This exchange was actually initially agreed to as far back as 2009, when then Chief of Staff of the Army, General Casey, visited his Chinese counterpart here in China. The two generals agreed that there were several areas where the U.S. Army and the People's Liberation Army could cooperate and interact. And one of the events that was discussed was the potential for an exchange between the premier band of the United States Army and the premier band of the People's Liberation Army. On behalf of the men and women of the United States Army, it is my great pleasure as the 37th Chief of Staff to welcome all of you to the Kennedy Center for this historic event. The, the first band exchange was actually the Chinese band visit to the United States in May of 2011. When the Chinese military band came to the United States, we performed at the Kennedy Center and on the floor of the United Nations General Assembly. And the United Nations performance perhaps received more global publicity than any publicity made possible by China or the United States. The United Nations understood how important this was. Here we are now in 2012, and, and we've reached the point where the United States Army Band is going to make a reciprocal visit. And so while we're just going to play music, it really is important in establishing the relationship, particularly between our two militaries. Friendship and cooperation through music. For the second time, the United States Army Band, Pershing Zone, and the military band of the People's Liberation Army of China will jointly perform. Moving this great operation uh, that, that we have here, the United States Army Band, to the other side of the world is, is, has a lot of challenges to it. People may think that we have the luxury of uh, just spending this couple weeks or so preparing for these concerts in China. Well, nothing could be further from the truth. The week before leaving for China has been quite a challenge for, for, for all of us, I'm sure. I know for myself personally. The normal job of Pershing Zone just keeps on going with high-level dignitaries visiting, uh, the daily task of uh, performing funerals and other memorial honors in Arlington National Cemetery and around the nation's capital. With all these other things going on and the soldiers preparing themselves personally to pack and get all those uh, provisions necessary to go to China, um, they have to, at the same time, maintain all the, the, the normal things that they need to do to perform their job. And preparing the music as well, you know, there's a great deal of personal practice time goes into these events uh, that no one really sees that's kind of behind the scene. 
we're going to load everything up and move it to China. Right now, we're doing a dry run of all of the instruments in the big cases. So everybody has to label it with green, find a box that it fits in, stick it in the box, and hopefully everything fits. Making a list and checking it twice. Well, let's face it, if you forget something back home, you're not going to be able to run back to Fort Myer to get it. Wonderful job. Let's go pack for China. No joint venture, if, if I might say, is uh, free of some hiccups. We were originally slated to have a 767, which is a really large plane, and they put us on a 737. Sergeant True Love is planning on the 737 plan with the original as a backup in case we get a bigger plane. We don't know about that yet. We've had to lose 30% of our uniform trunks and 100% of our instrument trunks and a lot of the other large cases simply because the, the plane wouldn't accept it. At this time, we don't have a solution. We don't know if we're able to land in the country yet. We don't know what time we're leaving. No, I'm trying to uh, keep it from getting wrinkled because I just spent like 10 minutes pressing my uniforms and of course now they get jammed in a box. No uniform left behind. It just, it for, that's one of the video boxes. Right, so I'm gonna, so, so gonna this, this is going in here. Great. I'm so glad I get to see this. I heard so much about this. Gift giving is a very important part of the Chinese culture. And so when we're giving guidance about gifts between individual sections, individual members, then between bands, uh, between the colonels, there was also mentioned that they needed a gift between countries. And the idea came out that we should give something that's kind of handmade and very iconic American. So the suggestion was made that we make a quilt. It was kind of an honor to, to do this and I'm, I'm hoping they're going to enjoy it as much as I enjoy it. It really looks like we're going to take this Delta no, this in the 747. Sweet. That's great. All right, so we can take your harp. Uh, I woke up early to get a one last mountain bike ride in before we left for China. I had an accident, obviously, and fractured my wrist. Well, we are at Andrews Air Force Base with the U.S. Army Band, and we're ready to embark on an adventure to China. We have lots of shared interests. We're more similar than we are dissimilar, I think. And uh, the common, the common uh, framework of music is a good way to get to know each other. We have uh, very few chances for cultural exchange with the Chinese military, so it's very critical for us to take this opportunity to ensure that they understand our sincerity, and our desire for a good exchange. These are so exotic foods that we normally does not eat. I'm all about the noodles and the dumplings. I I would I would try duck. Like I don't know, they even sell like fried scorpions. Yeah, fried scorpions. <laughs> I look forward to walking through Tiananmen Square. Mostly, I'm looking forward to hearing some great music. And we'll be keeping our PAs to a minimum at night, but I just wanted to uh, check in with you and say welcome aboard. I th yeah, this is going to be a really long flight, so I bought nothing but reading material. That's about all I have in my bag right now is a bunch of books and magazines. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, the members of the U.S. Army Band, we love you and we welcome you and we will take you to China safely and pleasantly. Welcome aboard. I know the impression that our band members will have when they get there. Wow country that 40 years ago had two lanes of automobiles. Rare was it to have private automobiles. They were mostly government automobiles. Six lanes of bicycles. Bicycles now are fortunate if they have two lanes of traffic because the automobiles have flooded the streets and it's reflective of the booming economy. Well, we made it to China, reasonably uneventful, and uh, got my luggage, everything went pretty well, had a good, good bit of rest on the plane. Unfortunately, it's nighttime here now, so I'm wide awake. Where's the crew coming with the crew? My role as producer for the Army Band meant that I was in country prior to the band's arrival. I met them at the airport with the PLA production team and uh, the media team that had been assembled for this trip. How do you uh, how do you learn Chinese? Uh, the pinyin, you know, written in English letters, shows you how to pronounce it. 
Is this difficult? Yes. Very difficult. <laughs> I'm not really sure yet. But it's gonna be good. Actually, I went to the gym last night. <laughs> I only slept for about an hour and a half. And now I'm feeling good, but I know it's gonna catch up with me later. At some point, we're all gonna probably crash. Jet lag and the time zone difference. China is 12 hours off from uh, Eastern time. When we're doing a, a performance at three in the afternoon in China, our bodies are gonna be at three in the morning. Today is our first day in China, and as you can see, it is a beautiful day in China. We were able to schedule some time to go sightseeing this morning, which was just such a treat. We went to uh, Tiananmen Square. Beautiful, incredible architecture, and so many people, just throngs of people. The square is absolutely humongous. I don't think pictures do it justice. This kind of reminds me of the tomb, our tomb of no gnomes here, this monument. Uh, now we're headed back to the hotel. And uh, yeah, we're going to get ready for yeah, our yeah, first uh, musical extravaganza. Right now, the only thing I'm worried about is, or concerned about, is uh, just my own playing because uh, we haven't had our instruments for a few days. Uh, so now I'm attempting to be able to play left-handed and right-handed, depending on how, how sore my arm gets. <laughs> We are at the rehearsal venue for the PLA band and we're getting ready for our first rehearsal, which will begin with a joint rehearsal where both of our bands will be sitting together and playing the same pieces, which will be a great chance to reconnect with the people that we saw when they came to the States last year. Good to see you again. Oh, yes, yes. yes. This time. My daughter. Uh, okay. It's a great day because we get to renew old friendships, but also make many new friendships. <laughs> and these friendships are important to you and I as people, but they are also important to our two nations. The music that we're performing on this tour is very interesting. We're doing a great deal of American music. The Colonel has chosen a, a good deal of American music to put on our program. One particular piece that I'm excited about is one called The Cowboy's Overture, and it's by John Williams, because we're going to play that piece alongside with the Chinese band, so that will be a great deal of fun, and we have really interesting French horn parts in that piece, so we're excited about that. Yes, we will be playing some Chinese compositions as well. We have some in our folder that, that we've prepared and we've rehearsed. And the pieces that we've uh, prepared, uh, the Chinese pieces, are not, I don't think, that much different from the American pieces. I think they're just, they're just uh, in my opinion, music is kind of, there's good music and there's bad music. And uh, that's all pretty good music. Jamunjian 
也对美国的那个军队也有了许多的了解，我们也感到非常的非常的高兴。在这一次，呃，我们去年的访问完了以后，我们也期待着美国的同行们能尽早的到中国来演出，我们有更好的交流，更好的接触。音乐，呃，是全世界的语言，这是我觉得这是千真万确的。呃，我们通过那些乐谱，呃，大家看到乐谱以后，我们都有共同的感受，我们都不约而同的都会演奏出同样的曲调、同样的感觉、音乐的感觉。呃，包括我我我作为指挥来指挥两个国家的那个音乐家来这个演奏，也没有任何的障碍，很顺利进行的。I, I will explain what each of these gifts means to us that you will receive. It's traditional in China for uh, gift exchanges to occur at the beginning of, of a visit like this and, and sometimes even at the end. And so uh, the soldiers each presented uh, their counterpart with some gifts representative of their country. This is green tea because my partner is from West Province, somewhere west of here. So this drink is special. This is a, a gift that we got in the oboe section. Our uh, the Chinese principal oboe player actually wrote this and then gave it to us. So this is very nice. And I'm not sure what it means, but I'm going to find it out. Later. Help me build the technique. <laughs> The walnut is a traditional Chinese part. Yeah. It's very good for the player to play wooden instrument. Make the finger nimble. Yeah. This is very precious. Why are you hungry? You can not <laughs> Each member of our band, each member of the military band of China, are individual diplomats. They're musicians first, they're professional musicians, but they also have a sense of pride in themselves and in their country. And they're going to convey that as they're sitting there between rehearsals, as they're sitting there studying the music, learning from each other, and they're going to warm up to each other. Uh, which is only possible if people want to be friends. Thank you. After the joint rehearsal, they took us on a tour of their military band museum. And then for the PLA band to bring us here to the museum, the first foreign band to ever set foot in this building, I think is uh, pretty special. I just noticed that there's a picture of us actually when the Chinese band was visiting us last year. So it's really cool that it's here in their museum. The more events we can do like this, uh, I think the more it goes to improving not just the military to military, but U.S. and Chinese relationships uh, in a more global way. So uh, I'm very proud of what the U.S. Army Band has done in reaching out to our Chinese counterparts. At the reception that followed the tour of the museum, it was pretty clear that the band was exhausted from jet lag. We're, we're going to be fed, we're going to have a banquet here that they are hosting for us, that the PLA band is hosting for us, and we are all tired, <laughs> jet lag is starting to set in, and we're just hanging in there. Take the cup buddy. It's up high on his shoulder, he can't get it. While soldier-to-soldier -soldier gift exchanges are an important part of the visit, uh, there will also be some official gift exchanges, and one of the most important will occur in Beijing, where Major General Michael Lennington will exchange gifts with uh, his Chinese counterpart. So we're very excited to not only give them a gift, but give them something made by American soldiers. This quilted wall hanging was designed to celebrate the friendship and cooperation through music between the nations of China and the United States. And so Sergeant Walter and Sergeant LaFosse, who actually made the gift.
Well, here we are backstage at China's National Performing Arts Center. Today we got a chance to rehearse in the hall. When we got off the buses and saw that beautiful building, it looks like a giant egg, like a dome, like a silver dome. It's an incredibly impressive structure. We were all just kind of floored. We ran out of the bus and started taking photos, of course. Uh, the place is beautiful. We got into the rehearsal today and we were able to play alongside our friends from PLA band once again. We, we picked up our friendships pretty, pretty well, as a matter of fact. We're finding out a lot about each other. The more that we, we get to talk about our lives, our families, how we live, what we do, and it was very interesting. And as I say, I, I think that we, we kind of live parallel lives. I haven't had much time walking around in Beijing itself, but the little bit of time I have spent in Beijing so far, it's it's just reminding me that that life is the same wherever you go. You know, people are just just being people, supporting their families, doing their thing, just living their lives. <laughs> I think it's really nice that we're getting a chance to really talk with some members of the Chinese military now and they are seeing the same thing about us. I think this is an example of what can happen in all of these military to military contacts where each nation has an opportunity to learn from each other. Not only we can learn from each other, but we can learn about each other. Uh, there are experts saying that like the ping pong diplomacy, uh, the joint concert between the two military bands is a signal of improving relations of the two militaries. Well, we're really pleased that we're able to bring two great bands from two great countries together. So, I'm very glad to be able to see today that two bands are playing together again in Beijing. The U.S. Army Band is now paying a reciprocal visit to China. We look forward to another close collaboration on the same stage by the artists from both our two ministries. And I'm sure that harmonious, beautiful, and memorable music will once again be contributed to the Chinese audience, and a colorful page will be written into the history of exchange, cultural exchanges between the two ministries. Trying to get practice in anywhere I can get it, in the lobby of the hotel, um, sometimes in the gym. 
just wherever we can catch it and whenever we can catch it. So we're on our way to the Great Wall right now, and um, this morning we were head down for breakfast, so we were just talking about how great last night's concert was. And uh, went over to get the newspaper on the front page of the newspaper about China Daily. There was a heading on there, and it was called Band of Brothers Set Tone. And on the front there was a photo of the United States Army Band along with the PLA Band side by side. In the photo there, Staff Sergeant Dean Woods, our contrabassoonist, taking a photo with his counterpart as well. So it was truly a success last night and documented all across Beijing. When the colonels both came out presenting their bands together on the stage, it really brought a very, very overwhelming response from the audience. And it was, it was actually, you, you could feel the enthusiasm. It was, it was a pretty special moment. We are in the Great Wall. I wonder if there'll be a cultural Great, uh, amazing site. Clearly one of the wonders of the world. We just got here from the Great Wall. We're uh, at a military base and we're about to enjoy a delicious lunch before we perform our concerts. The Chinese have been very hospitable to us and they've returned the favor that we showed the, their band when they were over in the United States. And we're appreciating it very, very much. Not many U.S. soldiers have eaten in the Chinese mess hall and uh, <laughs> an unusual occasion. <laughs> in the 6th Armored Division, there we had some kind of teaching class, just in 10 minutes. It's just like 10 hours. This is a military band of the 6th Army Division. The band member of the United States Army Band. And this band will do an exchange. Each section with a teacher from the United States Army Band to have a 10 minutes lesson and then we will get the band all together and give a loud applause to say thank you to the United States Army Band. Thank you. It's, it's getting, you know, makes the sound. This is your two lips. Jazz? You play any jazz? Swing? You do swing? Rebound. Rebound. With that exchange, I definitely found that despite the language barriers, we're all very, very similar in our approach to the clarinet. We all think about the same things. Our, their questions were mostly about um, how can they technically improve, um, get faster fingers, get a better sound. They learned a lot. It, it's my best uh, memory for this trip, I think. The audience at our concert this afternoon were all soldiers stationed here. And it was very unusual. I don't think I've ever performed a concert quite like that before. The, the audience were all sitting at kind of at attention. It took a while for us to really break the ice and get them to loosen up a little bit.
I'd like to thank the 6th Armored Division Commander, our host, and everyone involved in making our trip here to China so memorable and historic. The concert our band will perform this afternoon is an example of ways our two armies and our two nations can build and sustain a strong defense relationship so important to prosperity and stability in the 21st century. We play foreign anthems all of the time, but it was pretty spectacular to play the U.S. anthem and the Chinese anthem on a military base in China for the Chinese soldiers. One thing I'm going to remember this is my big takeaway from this concert was the end of the concert when we were playing Stars and Stripes Forever and they were clapping along with us. And I just looked out in the audience and saw an audience full of people in Chinese army uniforms thinking we are on a Chinese army base playing Stars and Stripes Forever and they're clapping along with us. That was just a thrilling moment for me. Chile有自己的军乐队,然后也有这样的表演,但是看这个表演是第一次,然后挺好的,然后很说的很挺好的。We're going to have the opportunity to take the high-speed train from Beijing to Shanghai. Traveling by bus, by van, is one thing. Traveling on that high-speed bullet train. You hardly think you're moving unless you look out the window. Now that's a trip that normally takes about 14 hours by car, and it takes five hours in the train. I'm guessing it's going to be about 180 miles per hour to 200 miles per hour. We just got on the bullet train to Shanghai, and the 6th AD had a present for us, a tie clip with a tank on it. We got a gift. It's a tie clip. I figured we'd make it useful. 
is the Bay Five Fish package that we were given for free, mind you. So those of you who are not okay, I, I opened it and tasted it. I thought it tasted like beef jerky with a slight fish taste, but apparently the smell it's just a fishy taste, fishy and salty. It's not pungent or anything like that. <laughs> you think it's not pungent? I think it's pretty pungent. My name is Wu Xiao. I was a member of the Jazz Ensemble and was the guitar player for the Jazz Ensemble. Oh, they are very professional. They are very smart and they are very excited. In fact, I was in the middle of the year when I learned the Jazz Ensemble. Then I was learning the Jazz Ensemble in the school. I was learning the Jazz Ensemble in the music school. One of the things I've noticed about playing with the PLA band is that the percussion section uses traditional Chinese instruments that we don't have. Finally, a Chinese instrument I can play, the gong. We think that we should be more in touch with the international community. Of course, this is a very fun experience and a very difficult experience. My name is Qi Li, I'm the director of the band. 哦，我在乐团十六年，嗯，感觉很亲切吧，又见到又见到他们。呃，首先就是从去年跟他们第一次接触，啊，同时还，所以那时候就很期待，他们就是再回来的时候再次见面。知道那个，嗯，也是也是，就是是像我刚才说的，时间比较短，要不我会带着我的家人还有我的孩子，完了一块儿来一起聚会嘛，见面邀请他们到家里，啊、可能聊聊天，吃点饭。Chinese have been modernizing for the last 30 years, lots of aspects of, of the country. The easiest to see is, is just the, the modern architecture, the skyscrapers rising all over China, particularly in, in Shanghai. The architecture had a lot of flair. The buildings weren't your typical box skyscraper buildings. All of the buildings had style. The two French horn sections are about to go out and uh, have dinner, talk a little bit, and get to know each other better. Definitely, I think it'll will bond more. And even though we don't necessarily speak that much of the same language, I mean they speak a little English. We uh, we seem to click really well. So it should be a fun time. Yeah, when they came the first time, basically. Our, our time was jam-packed with rehearsals. We could talk, you know, from chair to chair, stand to stand, but we didn't really get to hang out. So this is definitely the first time for that. Very exciting. Rob? <laughs> I know, Rob. Rob. The, the importance of hospitality. And we, differ, we would have different traditions for hospitality, but whether it's the Chinese or the U.S., uh, you can count on people giving warm greetings, striking up friendships pretty quickly, and really trying to uh, show what it means for their particular culture to be good hosts. Help. How do you say help in Chinese? Joe Meads. Rob! Yeah. You said you said have a representative to drink. This, this is uh, ours. 
单独敬你做个代表，代表。你代表元昊生度。哥。I think they chose me because I was a little late coming to the van. If you finish your play here in China, uh, that's actually an indication, not that you've eaten until you were full, but that you want to continue to, to eat, and they'll continue to keep the food on your plate as long as you continue to empty it. And music. Yeah, yeah. And music. Groups of musicians, whether it's a percussion or a brass section or the woodwinds, uh, really coming close together and following with outside of the rehearsals and performances, uh, sharing dinners together and laughing about stories and events, even though for the most part they can't directly speak in any common language to each other. In my conversations with, uh, with my colleagues uh, from China, I really had a difficult time because I don't speak Chinese. <laughs> but I did hear a little bit about their experience and, and how they get to the point where they are, they attend music conservatories, the same kind of situation as us. Uh, I think that we have, we're, we're very fortunate to have so many choices. We have quite a few really, really top-notch schools. And I, I think that they, from, from what I, the little bit that I was able to gather, it sounded like they had fewer choices but they also have uh, equally fine schools where they, they study and they, they perfect their craft before they're allowed to play in, in their top band. It is my honor to be here today to present one of America's finest musical traditions, the United States Army Band. I convey the greetings of the Secretary of the Army and the Chief of Staff and welcome each of our guests to tonight's performance. His tour marks the first time that the band has performed in China with their People's Liberation Army counterparts. We are deeply honored that Shanghai, China's largest and commercial capital, is a stop on this tour. We hope that our performance together will produce harmony that is pleasing to the ear, but also be part of a larger United States-China relationship that is based on agreement and a consistent and sustained relationship. Tonight our mission is building friendship and cooperation through music. Now, please welcome to the stage, leader and commander of the United States Army Band, Curtain Zone, Colonel Thomas Hallmuthier. Specialist of this unusual instrument is famed player and composer Steve Job. George Hamilton Green was a child prodigy of the xylophone. He made his first solo appearance at the age of 11. He was later called the world's greatest xylophone. He also went on to transfer a demi final in the piano for four thousand. Tonight, we would like to spotlight our own xylophone solo. An interview for George Hamilton Green, performing Silas of the Red Sky. I blame him. It was his fault. I blame him. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, man. You're fine. You guys are real, sir. Come on. I agree with you, sir. 
Let's just nice step job, through completely man. and go to the right. Let's take our instruments apart now. Just keep walking past the uh, instruments, please. Okay. Yeah. 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 Beijing and Shanghai, it's fairly easy to find someone that speaks English. Here in Nanjing, it is much, much harder. Fewer signs are in English, almost no signs are in English. Even ordering food at places right next to the hotel is, is a challenge, and this is an a international hotel. Being in Nanjing, I think, is definitely more like being in main China. This is a more uh, fluent experience of Chinese culture. So not much English. The food has been an adventure in some moments. When we were in Shanghai, the food was more mainstream. It was easier to find westernized versions of the things that we think of when we eat Chinese food. When we got to Nanjing, the food has definitely been more what I would consider to be authentic Chinese food, which is a little bit harder to encounter, I suppose, as a Westerner. Fried spicy scorpions. Let me, let's get a close up. Sure. Oh, wait, there it is. Lee, are you gonna do it? Yep. Oh, go straight up. I can't do it. Don't drop it. All right. All right. On the count of three. Yep. Let's do it. One, two, three. They all right? Yeah. Yeah. That was an exciting uh, meal. <laughs> the Peony Pavilion that we got to see was a breathtaking production, very ballet-esque, and the choreography was so connected and so tight. It was, it was a spectacle, it truly was a spectacle. The music also was very powerful, and the message of this story about love and loss and death, and it, it really was a moving experience.
Bravo, in your go. by them for us. Please accept our deepest thanks for everything that you have done throughout this trip to make it such a wonderful experience for us. What began 40 years ago with a ping pong match bears full flower today as our bands make music together. Because you have demonstrated to our militaries and to our nations that our people can work together. This is not something that ends here. It is a relationship that will go on for many years. When we say goodbye, it only means we will see you soon. At the farewell banquet, two of our band members were promoted. That is going in the history books, getting promoted by the two commanders of the two bands in China. We, we make sure it stays on by going. <laughs> that is probably one of the most memorable things that those, those soldiers will, will have in their career. Seeing the two soldiers promoted with the two commanders is another reminder of how we're trying to promote this friendship and cooperation through music, and I think that that highlighted that these two groups are working together, and they want their soldiers to succeed together, and they want to be a part of the successes of their soldiers, and that was, that was nice to see punctuated. We had a great time with our colleagues from the PLA band, and particularly in our section. It's going to make it a little bit hard to leave them, uh, but, but this, is not, this is not goodbye, as the Colonel said. This is just the beginning of the relationship. For me, the highlight has been the uh, performance done at Six Armored Division. You know, there's just something that uh, is special about performing for fellow soldiers, and to get to put on a full concert, and then to watch our soldiers get to spend time with the, the musicians in their band, and doing some coaching, and just talking about music. I think that was the, the most special time of this. Friendships have been renewed, and people are now talking, how can they continue to build upon what has already been accomplished? I, I've got uh, several persons, more, um, maybe about 10 email address, and I'm going to keep in touch with them. I like them really, and I learned a lot of things from them. 
that's absolutely not a, a time for saying goodbye, but saying see you soon. Maybe in US and in China, it doesn't matter. I feel like the friendships we started forging in the United States are definitely in root now in China, which again, it, it really does highlight that it does work, that friendship and cooperation through music works. By having music perform, which crosses all borders, brings people together, we can at least make advances in this relationship, which I say and others have said is so very important. I think we're learning. I think we're learning that there's a way through understanding, through enhanced communication, that we can leave a better legacy for our children than what we experienced in years past. Music is just a bridge. Through this kind of uh, communication, we believe that uh, it can be used for the two armies, as well as the two countries. I think the goal has been achieved. For a period of time, both bands, both countries, were playing off the same shoot of music.